Uh, are you the lead maintainer of uh, the CCAN? Or uh, one of the core maintainers. One of the core maintainers of the uh, comprehensive Kerbal archive uh, add-on, sorry, it's not Pearl, add-on network, <laughs> um, which is effectively a mod manager for KSP. So I'm just going to hand it straight over to Leon. Uh, please join me in welcoming him. Cool. All right. Well, as uh, Tim said, I'm Leon. Thanks for the interaction. Um, I'm a sys, uh, former sysadmin slash programmer. I was actually a sysadmin when I started programming for uh, CCAN. And I got my start gaming on a Hitachi Basic Master Level 3, released in circa 1980. Uh, still miss the pinball game it had. Moved on to the Commodore 64 and the Apple IIe before becoming obsessed with PC gaming. Also grew up on the Nintendo uh, SNES and the Nintendo 64 and recently got myself a Switch as well. But that's enough about me. Now, who here's heard of Kerbal Space Program? Oh, quite a few of you. <laughs> so you might want to keep your hands up. Who's played it? Hey! hey. Who's installed a mod? Hey. Who's used CCAN? Hey! Yay! Um, Anyone written a mod? Hey. <laughs> awesome. I expect you would have. <laughs> um, so Paul, aka at PJF, was tweeting about this game. And I'm like, hey, this sounds really cool. So I bought it and promptly exploded my first rocket. <laughs> so we chatted about mods and, and our a version of managing things by hand. Uh, as you know, uh, might know, Paul likes to automate absolutely everything. Um, and about a couple of days later, I get a message from him. So, I've been writing a mod manager. I'm like, cool. Obligatory cat picture. And 12 months on, the project was quite a success. Uh, after the first year, we'd indexed 4,500 individual releases. And I really put that down to Squad being very supportive of the modding community. Also, they were very clear about what a mod needed to be. And that was, in part, it must be, uh, the source code must be publicly available. And it must have a license. Which meant a lot of the mods released for Kerbal Space Program are uh, FOSS licensed. But we had some problems. <laughs> that wasn't mine, but I think I've done a few things like that. Um, we were seeing mods disappearing, and, uh, and mods were starting to centralise on a couple of places, which left a bit of risk, and things like dead links and whatnot, and people taking stuff down. Which meant, especially in the early days of uh, the releases, there was a lot of API movement and mods were not always keeping up to date as quick. So if you uh, had reinstalled and you wanted to get an older version of the um, mod, it may not be available anymore. Now, we could have added more rockets. <laughs> I had tried that. Um, but before we get into that some background about CCAN. So briefly, we have what's called a, a NetCAN. You might not be able to read that, but that's not super important, um, which contains all the basics we need to create our metadata. Um, they're regularly indexed, and we also use uh, webhooks uh, for some of the bigger sites, meaning that when an author releases a mod version, very soon are we indexed and installable via CCAN. Now, a CCAN um, has lots of information such as the author or authors, um, download location, license, uh, KSP version compatibility, and so on. And that gets pushed into our metadata repo to be consumed by the CCAN client. Now, when we were looking at sort of because we'd been discussing since program, uh, project inception of how we were going to store and back up mods, especially when the license allowed it. And we'd sort of looked at S3, but you sort of had to build your own infrastructure around making that happen. And there was also cost considerations. Um, for about a, 
a month's worth of, because uh, we keep uh, about a month uh, cached in our um, indexer, and it's about 30 gigs worth of files. So that could blow out pretty quickly. Um, so archive.org was sort of suggested to us, and they had the infrastructure. Uh, they have the want. Uh, they want to archive all software, uh, especially FOSS software. And they had a really good API that we could use. Well, really simple API. So I was able to build an integration for it pretty quickly. But I was pretty stuck when it came to a solution. I'd spent a lot of time thinking about it, and I had a lot of ideas. But I didn't really know which path to go down. So I sort of put it to the team. And um, the TLDR is I had come up with three options. One involved very little breaking changes. One involved breaking changes. And another option uh, involved a lot of work. And I wasn't really in favor of doing that. Um, but one of the, our contributors, D. Bent, uh, responded with feedback and lots of benefits for the option I wasn't considering um, uh, using. Uh, and a lot of things I actually didn't know about the project I was working on, even though I'd sort of been there from the start. Um, so I had a plan, which was no more manual metadata generation. So in the early days, uh, people would build the CCAN files, which are basically JSON, um, by hand. Uh, now we, everything would be done using NetCAN, our uh, automated indexing. Um, so I'd change the CCAN spec. Uh, implement hashing into our NetCAN inflator, create a process to uh, mirror things, and mirror all the existing things. Uh, all those four and a half thousand mods that were already indexed hadn't been mirrored at that point. So not much to do. Now, that's a lot of text, but our uh, current workflow utilized webhooks. Um, so we we're easily able to lean upon that. And when uh, NetCAN inflates uh, a mod and puts it into our metadata repo, that sends us a webhook with a list of changed files. And then we can use that list to check if um, uh, that mod is uploaded to the archive.org already. And if it's not, and it's a license compatible mod, we can create the entry and push the mod up there. However, we still had the problem of lots and lots of mods not already archived. So I built a robot. Now, one month in 2016, out of those 12 months, it ran. Can you guess which one it was? <laughs> it was a little bit busy. So that, that was also... Uh, the commits for, that were dwarfed by what our crawler bot. So it was uh, basically going through all our metadata and checking every single one to see if it had a hash. And if it didn't, it inflated it and then mirrored it. And also, because I kind of got the code out for doing the uh, hash generation before I built the bot, going through and checking everything that didn't have a, that had a hash but didn't get mirrored. So that's what the bot achieved in seven days. So 6,088 mods mirrored, uh, uh, 6,476 mods with download hashes, 356 mods with hashes, sorry, which don't allow mirroring, um, generally restricted licenses, uh, 16 mods with hashes but dead URLs, and 137 mods which failed to inflate which, all things considered, uh, were much better than actually what I was expecting. So things I learned from doing this was um, to share your ideas. Because I, I was stuck when I was coming up with a plan, um, I, sort of he I was a bit hesitant to begin with because I didn't really have a full understanding of what I wanted to do. But, so I when I did share it, I got a lot of feedback and different perspectives. And it was exceptionally motivating. 
Um, don't stress about the edge cases. They're probably way less of a big deal than what you expect. Um, I was thinking that we we're going to have to deal with a lot of uh, delisting of mods that were accidentally uploaded to the archive. But in practice, I've only delisted 10, and that was over two sets of mods in, uh, in, in two years. Um, this has already come in really handy. So I don't know if anyone knows of Kerbal stuff, but overnight, one day, it just disappeared. And we're like, what do we do? Oh, we've got all these mods in the archive. We just updated all the metadata to point to, to archive.org. Job done. Now for some stats, because we all love stats. So that's uh, our file count since um, launching CCAN Meta, or where all the metadata is stored. And as of the other day, we have 12,271 total mods indexed from 893 authors, 11,159 free and open source mods, and 840 out of the 893 authors have released a free and open source mod. And um, a total of 11,417 mods archived. Now, probably run a, a bit shorter time, but oh no, I mean I'm a bit short, but I've got plenty of time for questions, and I like answering questions. So, uh, do we have any questions, or have I just wowed you with all those statistics? <laughs> Yeah, go ahead. I mean, um, is that me or? Yeah. You, uh, so I guess my question is, um, have you run into any uh, sort of like licensing issues with authors going, uh, you know, how dare you archive my mod? If I want to take it down, I want to take it down. Um, okay, so the question was, have we run into any tr trouble with authors getting a bit upset with mods being archived? Well, we kind of went with the process of um, it's better to ask for forgiveness than permission. And no one's been particularly upset about it. Um, we have had a bit of trouble here and there with authors not quite understanding what it means to be free and open source with your license. Um, and that has caused some friction. And what's resulted is that they've turned around and changed their mod to restricted, and which is um, within their rights to do. And so that's sort of how anyone that sort of uh, has had a problem they've been able to get around it when we've sort of explained, well, this is how the license works. Uh, you're free to choose a different license. Um, but we, we do delist mods at author's request uh, if it's causing them problems. Um, but it's not something that comes up particularly often. Okay. Yep, over the back. This game, uh, so yeah, the question was, is this game on Steam? Yes, it is on Steam. Um, and you can buy it directly from Squad, I believe. Uh, and it might be other places as well. Um, so I was going to ask, how does it compare with Steam Workshop? How does it, how does it compare with Steam Workshop? Oh, the, the modding stuff? Yeah. I've, I've never actually used Steam Workshop, so I don't know that I could give you a, um, a good answer for that, but uh, yeah, no, I, I, not having used Steam Workshop, I'm not entirely sure. I don't even know if uh, Kerbal Space Program supports Steam Workshop. It doesn't? Well then, <laughs> that's probably a, a good place for uh, CCAN to exist then. Um, okay. Uh, so the question was, uh, so mods um, falling by the wayside uh, and not being able to keep up to date. Um, probably, this probably hasn't help, uh, assisted in that too much, but it has helped when mods have disappeared, which other mods rely on. I mean, we've never had quite had the left pad situation, but... Um, <laughs> um, 
it has helped when someone's been leaning on a mod and some authors don't keep up their mods, they use Dropbox links so they, they, they recycle them pretty quickly so it has helped with that. Um, but I believe uh, Kerbal Space Program's internal APIs have uh, sort of um, not moving quite as fast as what they were and people are able to keep up to date a lot easily, easier now. Uh, it looks like that's all for questions. Oh, all right, uh, so please join me in thanking Leon.